Uh, Tina might be. Tina, are you sitting next to me? Yes. I don't think anyone's sitting here, Rich. Did everyone get a piece of literature and all this good stuff? Where did you know? 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 you that because it was a request from somebody. And, you know, listen. Everybody's good? You're good? Yeah, I don't know. Except that I don't know. I don't know. Everybody's good. You don't because you got a crew behind you. Got it. 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 Got Victor said Johnny. Oh, shush. All right, get some to eat. No, that's all good. <laughs> yeah, what, I'm listening. I'll see if you can. I, I can get going. I, sure. Sure, <laughs> I talk pretty quickly. We can do, I can do the 15-minute the version of the, I don't know, we have about 15 minutes, so we can just break this out to 50. I can do it in 15. <laughs> These guys have seen me do it. I'm going to do it this afternoon. Where are we going to go, PPG? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're going down. We're gonna do <laughs> yeah, they're going down. Good. <laughs> we'll make sure we take great care of them. We'll take good care of them. Well, well, well thanks Thanks for having uh, Flexos here today. I, I, I think I've met a lot of people in here. Uh, for those who I haven't met, I'm Mark Capriati. Uh, I'm the Vice President of Sales for Flexos. Uh, my job is very simple. To help you. To help you generate revenue and profit for IPS. That, that's it. That's what I do. It is a fantastic job. I love it. I've been in our industry uh, since 1983. So I, I started when I was nine. <laughs> I've been doing it since 83. Uh, various things. Calling on industrial clients, selling mechanical seals, chemicals. All different industries, the boiler industry, the pump industry, um, and, and, and I think you'll find out with, with everything we present to you here today or show you or anything or my approach to anything that we do, it, it, it's all system driven. It's all system driven. You showed me a problem that, uh, that we're going to go look at later, right? Did I even start talking about the widget? Oh man, it's, it's not there. That's not where it's at. And you know what? That's not what the customer's looking for. They're not looking to talk to you about the widget. They're not. They're not. Right. you got a Keckley book here. I know these folks. I used to sell these all the time, right? They're good stuff. You could probably tell me six ways till Sunday about a Keckley strainer. <laughs> Somebody could in here, though, right? Or about a piece of pipe or a valve. I you got experts in here valves. You could tell me all about that. But if you don't know how to make it worth their while out in the system, big deal. It's just another valve, right? You have to tell them how to use it, what to do with it. That's what we do at Flexos. We do. We make a difference for you. So today I could sit here and get highly technical. We could talk about main anchor loads, how to calculate them, what effective area means to a main anchor load, how to figure out what the lateral force loads is from the guides, right? We can figure all that out. I'm here to tell you today, it's great if you know all that stuff. You do know it already. You know what you need to do? You need to call Flexos. I think the greatest thing I'm giving you today, and your biggest key to success, is this one piece of paper right here. I'm not a paper guy, by the way, and I'll send this to you electronically, Bob. I'm not for talking. I, 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 I don't like paper, but I gave this to you on paper, and, and give me your email, and I'll, I'll email it to you. This is your key to success with Flexos. Call us. Get a hold of our inside sales team, and I'll give you a little rundown of what they do. So I'm going to go through today, um, we're going to focus on some opportunities, some applications that will present themselves to you. So I just want to get an idea what some folks in the room do, what you do, and what, what your role is here at IPS, maybe how long you've been here at IPS. So can you get us started, just let me know your name and, and what you do here at IPS and how long you've been doing. So I've been playing on in here 30 years, next two weeks. 
inventory. Awesome. How about you, sir? Uh, my kid, I've been here about six months. Okay. Got full orders and no truck. There you go. All right. Sean Reinhold, been here about 12 years and um, do inside sales. Inside sales. Terrific. Terrific. Tina Wentz, <coughs> probably been here 16 years and inside sales. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm trying to keep all this math. We're getting there pretty good. You're a young blood, but go ahead. Sam Hollenbach, about six months outside sales. Okay. Okay. Hey, go ahead. Jared Hawes, outside sales, uh, four years. Four years. How many years have you been in the industry, Jared? Four years. Four years. <laughs> 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 we'll have to discuss that in a bunch of people. Uh, so I, I, we can keep going around the room. How about you? What do you do here? Right. Counts payable. Counts payable. That's good. That's good. Like Counts receivable. Counts receivable. So you two are like <coughs> joined at the head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you should be. <laughs> there you go. There you go. How about you, young man? Excuse me. I'm Tyler. I work in the warehouse and I've been here about two weeks. Two weeks? Yep. Terrific. Terrific. James Mummert. How many years have you been, right? Yeah. How many years have you been doing this? Refresh us. Twenty. Twenty years in. Twenty years in. Jason. Uh, Jason. Do I take? Yeah, IT. So, and, and, and we can get to everybody else, but there, there's over a hundred, well over a hundred years worth of service in the room. So think of the knowledge base you have right here. So hopefully we can add to that. That's that's our goal. So let's get going. There's our Plant One facility. We're in East Syracuse, New York. We manufacture, a U.S. manufacturer. Uh, that, that's pretty hard to see. And you'll see in this building, this is our administration, our, our inside sales team. And we manufacture hose in this building, basic hose like you see on the table there, um, four inch and above, stainless steel products. And we do some warehousing in here as well. And our inside sales team is there. Oh, sorry. This is plant two. We manufacture large expansion joints and all the bronze hose and braid. You see that bronze stuff? Can you hold that up, please? That's what we build down there. All the bronze products such as that and the larger expansion joints that we'll get a uh, look at. My office is down there, and then we have a training center. Who's been up to Flexos for training? So think about that. A hose company with a training center. What's going on? And uh, we have, now we have four classes that we have certified uh, by New York State to issue continuing ad credits, PDH credits that engineers need. We're going to see an engineer, right? He needs credits to keep up his license, that guy. He does. Well, we do. We've had over 500 people in the last four years. Uh, we have people in from Bahrain, Peru, all over the world, Mexico, uh, all over the U.S. So it's truly amazing, and people can get credits. We go on the road. I do road shows, and I, I do these for credit as well. But when you get to come up, uh, it's a great experience. Uh, you get to actually see product being built. And we put you to work. It's not a, a simple little training thing with us talking to you. It's an interactive. So uh, it's a lot of hard work, as the people who can tell you. We've been in business since 1968. It started as a uh, commodity-based company. It really was a, a mix between a uh, big thing. It was there a rep for Animet metal hose. I don't know if anybody remembers that, Anaconda metal hose. Um, and they, as a requirement for representing them, you had to have a a station where you can produce hose. So it was a commodity-based company. You need a piece of hose, it needs to be this long, it needs to have these ends. That's what we did. And uh, in 19, and gentleman Dick Eggert owned the company, and they actually represented one of our major competitors now, Highspan. Flexos was actually kind of a rep for Highspan in upstate New York. And the current owner, Phil Argersinger, um, he purchased the company in the early 90s, and he transformed the company from a, uh, a truly a, a commodity-based company that, uh, to, a, to, a, to an engineer-based and knowledge-based company. We, we now currently hold three U.S. patents, six trademarks. So we have a breadth of products that can fit engineered needs. So we go into industrial sales. You have to go in there with something significant, a solution for somebody, a product that's been innovative or developed that have something behind it rather than just a piece of hose. That's really what we do. Made in the USA, and I would say 90% of what we do, there's some rubber product and some Teflon product that we import, and that small compensator that you see there in front of you, that's an imported product as well. Everything else we produce right in Syracuse, New York. 
Here's our inside sales team. I don't know how well you can see that. That's John Golly. John manages the team. He does a phenomenal job, and they are your key to success. Who likes voicemail? I hate it. Thank you. We don't have voicemail at Flexos. We never will have voicemail there as long as I work there, as long as Phil Argersinger owns the company. Um, I, I truly feel voicemail can be a crutch for salespeople. Um, you call our place, the phone will not ring any more than three rings. We'll pick it up. I feel if uh, we don't answer your call by the third ring, it, it shows that we're not interested in your business. Um, we genuinely are. Any customer. If I'm in the office, I pick it up. If the owner of the company is in there and the phones go nuts, you know they go nuts here, right? Pick up that phone. We're right on the phone and uh, the customer goes directly to a salesperson. You can take their inquiry and they're ready to go. They're ready to go. Date stamp and time your inquiry. Um, once you give them an inquiry, they're going to answer, try to answer it and they're going to try to quote you immediately. And that's a change from where we were, let's say, two years ago. The mantra used to be 24 hours. And uh, I call on a lot of uh, distributors like, such as yourself and, 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 and I said, you know, my general feel for this, and I went back to our inside sales team and I said, I'm going to challenge you. That's not good enough, 24 hours. I said, what? I said, it has to be instant and then follow it up with a quote to it. I said, they can't wait that long. The pace of play in our business has changed. When do your customers want everything from? Now. Yesterday. Right now or yesterday. They want it right now. So telling you, you know, it's 24 hours. If it's something super special that we, it's custom and maybe we don't have a price for some of the components, we're going to give you a timeline. Hey, I'm going to have this for you in a few hours this afternoon or, or tomorrow morning, whatever. They're going to tell you, but it's going to be within that window, and they're going to define it for you. They're not just going to leave you hanging there. That we don't do. They do a great job. As you can see, John's doing an assessment on a drawing there. We do that all the time. Specifications, special bids, things like that with our requirements. We do it all the time. Uh, delegated design services. That's Dave Marshall. Who's talked with Dave before? 35 years in the industry. Truly a wealth of knowledge that he can bring back out to customers, and he will. Dave will take care of it for you right away. He's a great, great guy, great resource for us. I, I ask Dave about lots of stuff. I, I really do. Uh, I, I don't know everything, and I would never pretend to know everything. And you, you, that's why we have resources such as, uh, as Dave. So, TSSA, that's just a third party that certified us for CSA B51. Why do we have that? What that does. CSA B51 is a, a, a Canadian certification, which, well, we really don't care what we do. It guaranteed the burst and temperature and pressure ratings for all of those devices on that table. It's not just because Flexo said so. We have independent third party come in and blow up hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of material <laughs> to prove that we could do all of that. Everything that we ship out of Flexo is tested 100%. We have a UL B536, that's for gas. So if you have a customer who has a natural gas application, call us. Certainly, we can help now. ASME, all of our welders, they're ASME, Section 9 certified. So again, it leads into quality. That's all of these standards are. ANSI, I put ANSI in there. Well, of course we use ANSI flanges. Not everyone else does. Not everyone else who imports hose devices or uses things. We use all ANSI thickness flanges. You may see people now, the big trick is to actually send you a flange with a couple of grooves in the back and the flange will be a little thinner. Cuts down their shipping weight coming across in the container. We're seeing it a lot. People are saying, you're 25% high. So then we'll look at what they're going up against and that's what you're seeing. So, it's not the same, right? Would you want something like that on a critical application on a piece of equipment? No. No. Why? The land is really thin. It could go. It could cut out really quick. FM approved. We have a, uh, a product. I have a triflex loop on the table. We're into the fire business. That yeah. Fire protection. IAMTMO. Did you know Flexos has... IAMTMO is a, uh, a service that we use for NSF 61. We're all aware of that. The low lead. So no lead. And things are clearly <coughs> marked. You'll see devices on that table. The tape is white with bright blue writing on it. So it's low lead. You can't have lead anymore. Things. You, you probably have things here. Do you have leaded and unleaded valves and things like that here? It's a pain, isn't it? 
we didn't do that. We were actually a couple years ahead of the curve with that. So we've been no lead and we will keep going. It was a, a great thing for us. It was a big spike in our business and it continues to be so. And it's something you should promote uh, with Flexos. That we, we are NSF 61 approved. And of course, AD. We're a proud member of AD. Uh, it's really grown our business in the, uh, we've been 10 years now in AD and it just really has taken our business to, to new heights and new levels. Uh, and the relationships we've made have been terrific. They've helped us, this relationship helps us with other relationships uh, across the country. It really does. So again, thank you and I know you're a big part of AD. Stamped. <coughs> Last, I was here for the AD summit. Uh, when did we have that? January. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing was, a, 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 a huge thing for feedback was, what do we need to ask when we call in? What, what do I need to do? What do I need to know? You know, I, I know, I get it. You want me to call your people. I, I don't need to know everything, but what do I need to know? What are they going to ask me? You want to know, right? What, 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 what do I need to know? Well, here it is. Stamped. It's an acronym. So here's what we need to know when you're going to send an inquiry up to Flexo. The size of the hose. Basically, what size? ID, maybe how long it's going to be. And you could have all these answers, some of them, none of them, but try to get as many of them as you could. The temperature. Why is that important, right? What's the median? <coughs> what were you asking this morning, right away? What's the temperature? What's I went right through this. Yeah. But just, it's just, uh, right, this is what you need to go after with customers. And it qualifies. Like you said, that guy's going to want to see what you know, right? That's what he's going to want to see when we go there. He's, he doesn't care about the widget either. I'll be really honest with you. He wants to know what we know when we go in. Temperature. Does. has a big, big, it's a big factor. Temperature and pressure as they relate to hose and expansion joints. Application. What are we doing with this thing, right? What, what are we doing? Is it going on a pump? Is it going on an air handler? Is it an expansion joint? It's in a steam line. Is it in a tunnel? We want to get an idea of what we're doing with the device. The material. What's going through the hose? What is it? What are we really doing here? Pressure. This is critical. It's critical. The pressure, and then again, we want to make sure we qualify the operating pressure, and then what's another important thing to, to qualify? If they're going to test it. Most typically, a lot of places will test things at one and a half time it's, times its working pressure. So the device may be put out <coughs> to much more than the operating. So we want to ask. Simple questions to ask. And again, ends. How are we going to connect it? What do they need to be? Flanges, a, a retrofit. Maybe we need a floating flange on one end. By fixed at the other. Maybe 300 pound flanges. Stainless steel material. Whatever the materials may be. But these are simple things. So this was a, a common theme at the, the Field Marketing Summit. They said we just need a, a, a cheat sheet. What would the cheat sheet be? I think that's a pretty decent cheat sheet. It's the basic little acronym that people can use uh, and, and use as a checkoff list. And you may get them all, you may not. Let us know what they are and we can, we can certainly help you find the other things or ask. And don't be afraid at any point to engage us with your customer as far as getting them on a conference call, getting them on a go-to meeting, taking pictures. They're a 10 plus. These things, they drive us crazy sometimes, but I'll tell you what, valuable tool for uh, taking pictures. I've actually had people take videos of uh, air-operated diaphragm pumps. You have any, you have any food uh, industry down here? Well, food products, it's huge down here, isn't it? AOD pumps are, are, are great down here in the, in the food industry. And you'll sit there and you'll watch those pumps pulsate. I was watching this one at a place in Connecticut. The guy sent me a video. The guy from FW what? Amazing. We solved the guy's problem just because we could see what exactly what was happening with the piping. We sold him a special, and you'll see a little cut of it when I uh, go through it. Uh, as far as the solution we came, and it was just off a little video. So it's important. So engage us and use our people wisely. They are terrific. They are, they're, they're great. They are the, the production staff. People who build this stuff and our inside sales team, they are the backbone to our company. They really are key. And last but not least, delivery. If you need something tomorrow, 
let us know. I need this tomorrow. That's the key to the sale. We're going to know all this other stuff, but if they really needed it tomorrow and we can't deliver, big deal. It's, it's crucial. Let us know. They, they, they need this in a week. They need it in two weeks. They need it tomorrow. Let us know. And we'll make it happen for you. So that's stamped. It's a very, very simple little acronym that you can use to uh, come up with. Pump savers. Pump savers, you see a few of them on the table. It's our most basic <coughs> item. Big differences, and they're, they're, they're just, you can see some solutions right away, right? We can change size for customers. Maybe they have 10 inch by 8 inch, 10 inch by 6 inch. Or we can change it over to groove for them. Save them some time in their piping. It's value you're lending to the, comp, uh, the customer. Obviously, any lengths, uh, materials, we can get really exotic. They're all tested 100% before they go out before they leave our place. Everything's tested. They're either tested air underwater or to a helium mass spec test. Helium mass spec would be one air molecule every 10 years. That's what we test to with these things. Keeps the part dry. We like that a lot. So then we can send this off to paint very quickly after we weld it. So, three year warranty. Big difference maker as opposed to any of our competition or any of your competition. Everybody else is either one year or they just don't have a warranty that's really implicit or stated. Ours is three years. They're for vibration, parallel offset, right? That's what you're going to do with a piece of hose like that. Are we, are we going to compress that? Do we want to take motion so we would compress and extend a piece of braided metal hose? That's a, it's a no. And ask our people. They'll tell you what we're doing. You, you'll see a lot of times... Where we'll, we'll find out, oh yeah, well this piece of hose, it, it keeps failing. I, I'm replacing these every six months. What, give me a price on yours. I heard you guys are great. Well, why is the piece of hose failing, right? It, we want to find out. We want to find out what's going on in the piping system where a customer's replacing something every six months. That just doesn't add up. We're going to ask you that. And we'll help you through that. We'll help you through all of that. Typical. Back pull out pump. Maybe we increase it a little bit. They're going to a multi-purpose valve. These are just very, very basic. But this would go for any piece of equipment. Maybe it's an air handler. Maybe it's a chiller. Maybe it's a cooling tower. Um, maybe it's equipment. They have process equipment out in the plant where they need something special. Vibration in motion is an enemy to these nozzles of this equipment. What's going to happen is that vibration will transmit back to their equipment, diminish the life of that equipment, the bearings, everything else that they have in the equipment. So that's why it's critical for them to isolate all the nozzles. This is how we build these at the end. Uh, we, we actually have an automated welding machine that we use. We go through about a, a container load of flanges every month, tractor trailer load of uh, flanges every single month. It's robotic welding. Uh, we developed this machine with a company in Buffalo, New York called Queaky. Um, we are the world's largest consumer of uh, flexible metal hose, corrugated uh, hose. There's nobody who uses more than us. We use the most. There you go, it's a nice shot of them. And they're welding these up. Let's just go and test air underwater. That's a section uh, of the device that he's testing. That's a 30 inch. 30, I like that picture because it looks like that's Bill Wells. All right, he's in purchasing for us. Looks like Bill's going to get crushed by that press where they're doing that kind of like that shot. But uh, that's a 30-inch braided piece of hose. We actually built that hose that's inside of there. So once we get up over, let's say, 14-inch, you have a distinct advantage over any of the pretenders that, that say they can compete with you. Because we're actually going to manufacture the hose that's inside of that braid. That braid acts as the pressure carrier. Remember when you were a kid, you had those little little finger cuffs, the Chinese handcuffs? That's what that braid does, is it gets pressurized, right? Once we fill it with fluid or whatever we're going to do, it gets tighter. You try to pull, that's what it's going to try to do. That's what that acts as, the pressure carrier for that hose. Well, actually, in the larger sizes, we're going to build the hose that goes inside the braid. You're at a huge advantage. That's when you really, really want to rack up some profit. Add money on there. It's huge for you. A couple of projects. This was down in D.C., the convention center. This is an older project that we did, but I like to show it. You can see in the room off of the chillers, off of the pumps, boilers. We did everything in here. We had triflex loops, expansion joints, you name it. Uh, it, was, it was a very complete project that we did. 
It's a JW Marriott in Indianapolis. I like to show this because this was a groove system. You're seeing more people going with groove piping systems? Mm -hmm. It's popular. It's popular because our, 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 our technical skill level in the labor workforce right now is, is really at a pretty low, low point. So as people are not getting as good, I guess we're, 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 we're doing more with groove piping systems. Custom metal hose. You do a lot with this as a company. You do. Your sales with us on this are strong. Custom pieces of home. Ah, uh, I need a, a floating flange by a fixed flange. It needs to be 25 inches long. Uh, I need it in two days. You guys will make that call. It's great. Keep it coming. You become a greater and greater resource as you offer that. Our proximity is <coughs> a huge competitive advantage for you. You're, you're very close. We can usually make these things happen very quickly and get the product in your hand. Specialty ends, JIC swivels, <coughs> different materials, ink and L's, Monel's, Hasseloy's, all those. We can do all those for you very quickly. So let us know. Let us know what you need. And truly, once you become a resource on this, um, you'll, you'll see it blossom into more and more engineered products such as the specialty uh, expansion devices and things like that. So it's a great opportunity and you're doing very well with it now. Your business is growing each and every year with us. Rubber expansion joints. Anybody familiar with these? It's an imported product uh, from 99.5% of the uh, applications that are out there. Uh, it's very hard to produce this product in the U.S. with the EPA standards that are there for molding rubber. It's just a, a tough go to do it. Um, unique thing, CSA B51, the facility that builds these for us, they've been certified. All of these items have passed those burst tests. We're three to one. Everybody else, we don't know. To be very honest with you, we don't know where they're at. So hopefully they have a third-party test. We do. Our name is on every product that you'll get from us. Flexos, right on there. Coast Guard approval, right on there. Various sizes to your warranty, which is an advantage it's much longer than others. And again, just isolating a piece of equipment you see that overextension, again, once something pressurizes, you're in danger of that thing overextending. And most typically, people would use control rods. We looked at a, a, a snapshot earlier. And again, a key thing here is this anchor on this. So these control units, they prevent this from overextending. Here's a couple of shots. This is a food process. This is a walnut place out in California uh, that I was at. And these are outdoors. A lot of the equipment in California, weather-wise, put it outside. It's good, however, for rubber, it's a challenge. It's sensitive to environment, UV, right? So they put these coatings on it, things like that, to try to protect them. And you'll see that shot. There you go. So now this thing's splitting and cracking. <clears throat> That's dangerous. Because eventually when it's pressurized, what could happen? It could blow. So you've got to be careful with environments that we put things in. Um, there's covers that you can put on these. I don't know if I would have, and, and ultimately we didn't use rubber for this application in the future. They're just off basic pumps. Air, air systems. There you go. Terrific. You have any of your customers who use air systems to help in food processing? Multi stage air. Again, that's for vibration and dampening. Here's the control rods. This is very, very typical, right? You're going to put a rod so this thing can overextend. You'll see it right next to the valve. I don't know if I like that so much. Here we go. These are homemade. And on the inside, not too good. Those, those ended up being a problem. They, bought, they were losing a lot of these. And we said, well, here's why they're losing them. Those aren't installed properly. Once they fix that up, we got it. This one I love because it's from the future. 2036. <laughs> I really like that picture when he sent it. But we got one on the inside of the flange and one on the outside. This is the proper position for that gusset. This other gusset should be underneath here. And again, it was a misinstallation. We straightened that out. What, what wasn't this that wasn't doing its job, right? It wasn't about this at all. It was all about how they, they, they didn't install it properly. That's really what it came back to. Well, we have a patented product to help you. So now, instead of cutting these rods, let me go back. So now, typically, a contractor, a maintenance person has to cut these rods, bolt it up, figure out how long it has to be so it can move properly, 
Instead, can you pick that up, sure, that, that, that stop link right there? There you go. Ready to go. Right out of the box. It's patented. No one else has that product. Just us. Self-centering ball. It sets all on its own. Once the, once the device is pressurized, it can bolt it right up. So anytime you sell a rubber expansion joint, what should you sell? Stop link. Stop link. Every single time. It's a safety device. It, 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 it's a no-brainer, and you can make a lot of money selling them. Uh, when we first introduced that product, 80-20 uh, rule, we thought 20% of our sales would be constituted in that and 80% in rods. Um, we were wrong. It ended up being 50-50, and right now we're at about 95-5, and that's the leader. Only 5% of our control sales are uh, in rods. The other 95 is in stop link. So it truly did catch on. It's so much easier. It's lighter. There's no chatter with the rod. Uh, it's a simple thing for the, uh, the contractor or maintenance person to install. No measuring, no nothing. Just it's ready to go right out of the box. You said the um, expansion joints as well as the rods are import, correct? The, the, yes, that's an imported item as well. Okay, but what about the... The rubber joints? Yeah. They're imported. They are imported. Yeah, and there's, like I said, there's, there isn't anybody else in the country who really uh, manufactures rubber uh, here. There's a couple of people who do it. You need to wait about 15, 16 weeks to get one, but you can get it. Yeah, I did it to follow up with Lace. I did a job that had to be domestic, and they right. they let those go because of that, that same thing. They just they, they, it, it's nowhere just else. It's, they it's have nearly the impossible, and it's because of the standards that you have to go through to manufacture it. If the standards were there, we would get into the business, but right now in order to get into it and the return on it, is, it it's just not there. It's not so everybody imports and we import a lot. A lot. <clears throat> Our business has doubled uh, over the last three years. It's a phenomenon that's going on. Over the last three years our business has doubled on rubber. And a, a lot of it's application driven, meaning this can take, this rubber device can take compression and extension. Remember I told you that piece of hose, the metal hose, we don't want to compress and extend that. Right. This can take that and some offset. So now a lot of people, this becomes a catch-all for them. Problem being, there's a couple things you always have to remember when we're applying a rubber device. Pressure and temperature, <clears throat> they're crucial. Because they can only go so hot and they can only go to certain uh, pressures. So it's critical that uh, you consider all those things. There's a nice close up of the stop. Air, uh, a, a little air scoop that we sell, our purge air, simple little device. It has a little air scoop that comes down in stream. We've done these up to 30 inch for customers. We used to actually manufacture these for Armstrong International, up in Canada, a puppy. And uh, I don't know, they're calling every year nickel and diamond us, you know, can you, can you lower your price by 2%, 3%? Finally, I was like, no. Well, they said, we're going to go somewhere else. And I, and I finally had, Got fed up with them. So I said, go ahead. Two weeks later, we had literature printed, introduced the product, and here you go. We've sold more than we ever sold them in one year. <laughs> one year of business, we did more more units than we did for them forever. So, and it's because of distributors like you. It's a very simple product. Uh, you'll see people using tangential uh, air separators. This is just a straight through. Very handy. We stock them up to 12 inch right at Flex Edge. It's a lot of them. Really do. And just put an air vent right on top here, a high capacity air vent up on top. Very simple. Expansion joints. This is where you've really been making some great gains as a company. You've been getting into more and more applications with these. And uh, I think this year we're really going to hit it even, even greater. We've already, the indications so far and a lot of the inquiries we've seen have been very strong. Um, expansion joints. Key to it being, right, as temperature increases, what happens to a piece of pipe? I don't have to go through all this. It's going to grow, right? Some people here may not know it. And you don't need to know all this and what the effects are. We, we'll do this for you. <coughs> Excuse me. It could be anything. Chilled water, condenser, steam, hot water, domestic, all of these things. And it's all based on what? Delta T, metallurgy, and we typically uh, convey that expansion and growth per 100 feet of pipe. That's what we're going to usually do. So, and we'll qualify this way. We'll, we'll, we'll do all of this with you. You don't have to worry about that. Send me a pencil drawing. It doesn't matter. Or just tell us over the phone. 
and we'll qualify how much growth there's going to be for you. Lots of different ways to handle it that customers will use. You'll see them, I think you sell a few of these, right? Yeah. So they're just going to free float my system, right? So my pipe's going to sit in the clevis, and what's that clevis going to do on that pin? It's going to sway, and the rod's going to move, and is that a great way to handle thermal growth in a piping system? No. No. That's a recipe for disaster. Same thing with rollers and, and springs. And then, of course, there's free floating. Yeah, I'm just going to put all kinds of bends in my piping system, or I'm going to have somebody build these, and I'm going to pay my welder a lot of money, and I'm going to buy lots of elbows. And that's not a bad thing, selling fittings. I do that pretty well here. But I'm here to tell you there's a lot of better ways. Externally pressurized expansion joints. Here we go. This is our flex press. There's a cutaway. There's actually system media that's on the inside of that bellows. And then the shroud would be all closed up, or the shell would be closed up, obviously. There'd be system media on the exterior of the bellows, equalizing the pressure and allowing us to take a great deal of movement <coughs> in one device. And then a traditional metal bellows. We make all of these in East Syracuse, New York. And we'll size all of these for you. Well, you can obviously see, so call in any hospitals, institutions, places like that. Tunnels underneath them. Guess what's in there? <coughs> these. Lots of them. Lots of them. I'm going to show you something else they have in here. The flex press, this you'll compete a lot with people like Highspan. You'll see people like that out there. Or Metroflex. You'll see those guys. They have a product that's called the Metric Gator. And after a swamp animal, whatever the heck it is. I don't know what they're doing with it. All I know is they bring it on a crate from overseas. And it has basic motion. Uh, there's no technical know-how behind it. We can tell you it's very simple. We stock these, by the way. We stock those all the way up to 14 inch. And we can give you all the edgement calculations for it. We can tell the customer and apply it into their system. Five-year warranty, it's unmatched. Highspan has a uh, three-year warranty. Uh, the import products that everybody else has, uh, uh, I don't know what their warranty is. Try to pin them down. I had a customer try to do that and they wouldn't do it. And they told that very same customer that they could bury one of those under the earth. So I don't know what that meant. You'll see in our literature, all of our literature will tell you motions, and you'll see red meaning hot. So this bellows, as it gets hot, what's it going to do? It's going to compress. As it cools down, maybe it definitely is going to expand. So maybe what's a cool application? Chilled water. How about cryogenics? Something like that, extremely cold temperatures. We would need to size this bellow so we would know how much it's going to actually extend. That would be critical. And again, we could help you. You don't need to remember any of this or all of it. You need to know that there's, for any of these applications, help is there with our inside sales team and myself. You give me 24 7. Here's a tunnel. I know people have been in a bunch of these. These things kind of freak me out sometimes because there's. I'm not really big on like mice and all that stuff. Oh God, freak you right out. I had a, the one in New York State, a prison downstate. And you open up the hatch, and I don't mind going down and things once in a while, but you looked and there was water. Really? I'm going, dude, I'm not going down. <laughs> He's like, we had like these chest wear boots on. I go, I'm just not going. It's just not going to happen. I could just tell there were like critters floating around. I go, so once you get it all pumped out, I'm going in. So, uh, the steam tunnels. Here's one, Tropicana in Florida. We have several of these at Tropicana. Uh, steam, that was on steam, and then all their condensate lines. And uh, Actually, we had some on raw product that they bring in, which is, is, is kind of neat. Now there, there's cryogenics. They actually make frozen orange juice concentrate there. So we're actually on some of the cryogenic lines with, with devices as well. So there's multiple applications in there, hose applications, expansion joints, and all the like. You'll see a lot of these. You will, and there's a lot of these out there. It's a packed expansion joint. Um, a pa is anybody familiar with what packing is, rope packing? It's like a, uh, uh, they used to use it for pumps. I, I say used to, people still do. But this actually is nothing more than a piston that has some packing around it, and it slides in and out on each other to take expansion and contraction. Well, in order for packing to work right, it has to be saturated with whatever the media is, and it has to weep. So it has to leak. 
So you actually see it. There's a gland here, so if it's leaking too much, you go down there and you crank on the nuts, make the packing expand more so it doesn't leak as much. Well, how often do you think a maintenance guy is going to go into a tunnel in a confined space and go down there and, and tighten the packing? Never. It's dangerous as heck, and they just don't do it. So that's why when you go out on a college campus or a hospital campus, you can see like when it's snowed, you can see right where the steam lines are, or you can see the steam blowing up through the manholes. It's what? Bad traps. You're Watson McDaniel people will tell you about that. And it's these things leaking, like a sit. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And what's all that steam when it goes out? It's cash money. That's what it is. So, again, you can replace all of those. Oil refinery. That's down in Houston. There's two of those rigs that we did with these guys. Isolated all kinds of stuff. There were some expansion joints, and you can see the connectors that we did with them as well. Bellows flex. These are all custom. You're only really going to get up to about a little over three inches with one of these, whereas with the flex press, you can do eight inches on one of them. If you do a dual, you can do 16 inches of expansion. But again, we'll help you design it. It's our seam welder that actually uh, welds this capsule itself when it's in its rolled form. You can see it's all back purged and the heat affected zone becomes very small and very light. These are 48 inch expansion joints for a project that we did was at the time called the New Doha Airports in Cotter where they're going to be hosting the World Cup for soccer. Um, huge airport. It's the largest airport in the Middle East. We did. Uh, 64 of these, that was the start to the job, and you'll see some of the detail. There's the flanges on this, 600-pound API flange. You see that table Todd's working on it. He, he's our production manager. He said, you know, really would work out well if I could stay in position to weld these. We TIG weld everything, by the way. We don't, we don't, man, we TIG everything, tongue center gas weld. And he said, if I could stay in position and get these things going, um, I could build us a table for about 12, 1,400 blocks. Go for it. So we're not some big company that, you know, you got to go through all these memos and all this and approval plans. He went out and built this table on a weekend. He came in to start doing these, and he killed it. He knocked the hours out of the park to weld these things. And, and there you go. So that, that's what we do. That's innovation. That, that's empowering somebody to go ahead and, and do a great thing for the company, which he did. So all these flanges, I was on a teleconference with one, uh, their, their engineer was in London who did this, and I said, gee, not for nothing, it's a chilled water system. I said, I think you're going to operate at about 70 pounds. And I said, you'll overkill with the flanges. They're 600-pound API flanges, 48 inches. Not up for debate. He goes, that, that's what they use for uh, that size pipe in the Middle East. Those are what's around. So they just have those size pipes. So if anything ever went wrong or anything you're going to connect to is that. It's about two miles of chilled water. This is all on chilled water. Two miles of chilled water piping that went from the CUP, the, the, the utility building, back out to uh, the airport itself. There's kind of building on those. Uh, hinged expansion joints. These are great. So you look at a load cell, maybe, or a tank, something like that. So the tank itself is going to grow, right? The tank's going to grow. It's a steel tank. It's going to expand and contract, and it's going to actually turn. Same for the piping. So here we get to handle that motion independent of each other. We use a couple of hinged expansion joints because that's what that pipe's going to do. A couple of shots of some hinged units. <coughs> Inline pressure balance. Uh, th th this expansion joint, really basic. What we're going to do, this balancing bellows is going to knock down your anchor loads to structure by about 60%. So if a customer can't build new anchors, which really are the key to the success for the expansion joint, they only have existing things, perhaps they can use something like this. Highly, highly engineered joint. This joint right here is about 65000 bucks for the customer, just that single joint. Um, and you, you, you can see that was, uh, yeah, it was a great order for us to, to do that one. Gimbal expansion joints. These can take multiple plane motion, as you can see. Build these all right in East Syracuse again. Pipe guides. Customers hate these. They do. They like to try to not use them. They like to get away from doing them because they have to be tied into structure. They're actually there to lend column strength to piping. They're called spider guides by some. Let us know. We'll have to, if you don't guide a pipe, obviously it's going to move. 
they have to be set at specific intervals. This is an EDGMA chart, Expansion Joint Manufacturing Association. They have to be set at very specific distances so that the expansion joint will survive in the system. We have software that's online. You can check it out. Our XJS system software is to size expansion joints, calculate man anchor loads, and to lay out pipe guides. It's great. If, if you want to try it, go right ahead. Check it out. Call our folks. They'll walk you through it. It's simple to use. They don't ask you for too much information. And again, we'll do it for you. The ultra joint, this is terrific for risers, whether it's in a... Uh, Maybe you're walking up, you have piping going up uh, a large stairwell, something like that. Uh, it's terrific. We incorporate a, a shroud. Uh, the actual pipe guides are built right into this. So there you go. You think that's value? Now you're going to eliminate a pipe guide. It's built into the device. So the customer doesn't have to worry about doing that. Flex comps. You see a lot of these. And they're all, I'm going to tell you right now, 80% of these are installed improperly. People will put them in. Uh, they're usually used on larger HVAC systems or smaller, uh, uh, smaller, let's say, water systems. You'll see them on domestic systems. They're never guided or anchored properly. There's a guide built into that, but just folks don't do it. They don't, and they fail at record rates. You go to larger cities or really vertical places, uh, you'll, you'll see service people or actual maintenance facilities people. They'll keep uh, a couple dozen of these on the shelf. And the what are they little. basically used for? They're basically used, we see most of these in HVAC systems and small plumbing systems, things like that. You usually don't see these applied industrial. we do, industrially. We do, though, sometimes. You'll see people use them. But again, most typically they aren't guided properly or anchored properly. So the things fail and, the, and people just keep replacing them without any questions asked. When we really could come up with a solution for them is to, gee, you wouldn't have to keep replacing these if you put in a couple of pipe guides here or if we used an anchor that was significant enough to handle this load, we could calculate the load for them. So now you're giving them a solution, and now they're going to come back to you for everything else. Not just the Flexo stuff either, right? Really. You sell much more than just Flexos, and you sell much more than just pipe and fittings in that. They'll come back to you as a resource. Pump Flex. This has been a huge growing category for us, and I'm happy because it's for larger IDs, and we go much larger than that. We've done some 24-inch. Uh, we just did a job uh, last summer. It was for Ball State University for their second <laughs> chilled water facility that they did. And they're isolating all their equipment, chillers, pumps, air handler, big air handlers, all, all that stuff. And they had used, the year before, they had used uh, hose, big hose. And I told them... That's insane. Right when I looked at the drawing, this said, number one, it won't hit the pressures that you have in your spec. Well, we already have it in place. Well, I said, whoever told you that is not really giving you the whole story there. It, it, it just isn't so. I go, that would be new to our industry. I don't know how they did it. He's going, you're kidding me. I go, no, well, I'm not kidding you. I go, furthermore, we could build it for you. It wouldn't hit those pressures that you wanted. It would have been about $250,000 worth of just hose. We were able to get them down to about 150 just selling these. Save them 100 grand. Think they were happy? They liked it a lot. They liked it a real lot. I wrap up in uh, Indiana. Did a nice job with them. Which, oh, sorry. So here you go. This is typical if somebody were to use hose. It's a really bad application. It's usually on larger pipe and it's going to put a lot of stress and strain, maybe on a horizontally split pump. This is really what you want to do in that detail. And again, anchoring the structure is key in anchoring. Anchoring is huge in piping systems. They make everything work. They really do. Exhaust, engine generators, boilers, things like that, larger boilers, industrial water tube boilers. Uh, maybe you have a generator. Here you go. This is an MIT up in Cambridge. Temperatures get really high. I think actually can go up to 1,500 degrees. They're usually very low pressure. There you go, the thimble head down. Again, we'll do all this design. You can see some customs that we've done with elliptical heads. The TriFlex Loop. You see that product on the table. This is a patented product. This will handle motion in multiple planes. 
multiple planes, six degrees of freedom, three coordinate axis plus rotation. We can do this for gas, for med gas. We'll oxygen clean them and bag them for you. Uh, this is truly a unique product. Also, continues the motion you'll take, right? Compressing and extending. UL, five year warranty. Here's the real payoff with this. So we talked about previous expansion joints and what their large anchor loads would be and all the pipe guides that someone would have to put in. Or if they're going to hard pipe it, you can see all the space and the footprint this would take, right? It's a two to one. You'd use like ASHRAE methodology and their anchor load would be up around 1,200 pounds. The triflex loop, there's no pipe guides necessary because we can take motion in all degrees of freedom. And the anchor loads, only 83 pounds. All it is is the spring rate of the hose. If you hang it, can you hold up that bag right in the middle of there? That's nice support it. Right there on the table. UL certified brake strength cable that they would crimp right onto the device. There's a good detail of that. Right onto these URC clips, universal restraint clips. And you can see they're load rated. This has been welded on by an ASME Section 9 welder. So industrially, these are a huge, huge opportunity. Maybe for a steam line or a condensate line. Maybe the condensate's a Schedule 80 pipe and put Schedule 80 ends on it. Stainless, doing all kinds of materials. So really try to be creative. We can handle a lot of things where it's not easy to get to structure in industrial facilities to anchor piping, is it? It's really tough sometimes to find a piece of structure to get a piece of pipe to stay still for you. It just is. This takes a lot of that out of the way for you. It really does. We have software for it. It's on a disc. I'll be glad to leave one off. You can use it on as many machines as you'd like. You can size these. We'll do it for you. Get a hold of our folks. You can actually create CAD drawings, too, in the software. Pretty, pretty neat stuff. Oh, that one's down at the... Gaylord on the Potomac. That was uh, 18 inch. Some decent size ones. Those are for fire protection systems, the orange ones. These ended up going to that new Doha airport. I'll show you a couple of shots of those. We actually started with the expansion joints. We ended up getting all the loops, all the expansion joints in the building proper, all the connectors. It was uh, ongoing. It lasted about two years, that product. We actually use a, a trolley system to get these square, and you can see him. He's putting on shipping shipping bars to these, so it ships in a neutral position. Turn the face on these, turn the corner. This is for Dana Farber Cancer Institute up in Boston. Those were nice size ones. Those are, those actually went down to uh, uh, Peru. Two went down to Peru. Those went to uh, a job in uh, Colombia. The first load of them, and I think those were mysteriously lost. <laughs> and so, uh, and do another work. Just absolutely amazing. They five crates of things just. just <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a dangerous place. It really is. Seismic, um, and I won't go too deep into this, but this is something that is a huge opportunity. So, really, all you need to know on this is do you have any uh, facilities that are doing additions, hospitals? Any of your plants doing an addition to them? Well, when they do, if any of the piping's passing between one structure and the next, there's opportunity there. They have to isolate that piping properly so it can move. Each building is going to move or drift independent of the other. Here's the building A, building B. So they need to do something about this piping that passes through. It's going to move in all directions. So it's not going to just move in X. Or Y or Z, or just drift. It's going to move in all directions. And they're required to do this with the International Please. Building Code, which the Pennsylvania Code is based on. <coughs> Again, building drift, there's a UL product there <clears throat> to handle building drift for natural gas. There's our training center, quick Thank shed. You. I'm up there yapping to people and doing our thing. Uh, and again, uh, we will be having a training in May. Some people up. We talked about the setup height. You suggested we do it. Uh, that's what we're going to do. I believe the dates are 19 and 20. So and travel in the morning. The guys the lunch. <laughs> Just a couple of 
projects to highlight for you. Get you out of, here's the airport that we did over in uh, Cotter. And you can see the uh, welding and everything else that went into these. These lugs we had to do, uh, we had a custom design by, uh, uh, we did everything. We did the logistics. So these things, they would spot a trailer during the day. We take a picture of the items, all the paperwork, everything else. We email it to them. Um, DHL would take it. Cotter's a very wealthy nation. They would fly this. These would be in, in Cotter the next day. Within 24 hours, those things were there. They don't care. They fly. They flew them out. Oh yeah. Everyone's rich out there. They, 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 they loved it though because we just took pictures. It's the Middle East. And, you know. It was pretty simple stuff. I'm not saying this was really high tech. So yeah. we would go out there with their phone and take a picture of all this stuff and send it to these people. But it meant a world of difference to them. It really did. It truly did. There's the containers. They'd spot them. We'd send them the info. Here you go. Here comes your stuff. They'd hook it up, and the next day the stuff was there. Fifteen grand next day, Eric. Oh yeah. <laughs> ah, believe me, they're a very, very wealthy nation. It's that, that liquid gold they got pumping out of the place. That's the main terminal that is just, and you can just see the complexity in the building, right? So you saw all those loops. So we had just the chilled water, and I got a glimpse of what this was, and I said, you guys are really missing it. Really, where we can help you is in here as well. So the, the expansion joints are easy. And they go, well, you sent the 64, 48-inch expansion joints. That's easy. And I said, yeah. I said, we really need to get into this. And I just look at the architecture of that building. When I look at blueprints, it's pretty fun. I stand up and I immediately look at that lower right-hand corner. There it is. Just look at the shape of the building. It lends itself. You know when you're driving through a parking garage, you feel that thumpity thump? That's an expansion joint. So wherever these pieces of this building are joined together, there you go. Expansion joints. There's three of them there, three of them here. This wavy stuff was great. It's just really great. And all the piping that's in there, just think about it. That's where it really helped them out with the thermal expansion and the seismic isolation of this building. And then now they're going to build a, <clears throat> I don't know how you do it, an outdoor mosque in the middle of the desert. But they are doing it. And it's going to be air conditioned. <clears throat> I don't know. If the air comes up from uh, below. It's almost like a computer room floor, as they're explaining. To me. So we're working on that with them right now. They're putting it in. And uh, what are they telling me? I think uh, 8,000 people would be able to pray at. It's just amazing, uh, very well. But anywho, that, that's the kind of things we did. I'll, I'll close on this one. This is the National Geospatial. Um, this is a joint project, uh, joint venture project between the NSA and the CIA. This agency monitors all of the satellites that are up above the Earth. It's in Fort Belvoir, Virginia. I went to commission this job. I was in security for two and a half days so I could get clearance to go in and then commissioned for about two to three days. Uh, amazing. There were 6,000 construction workers on this uh, job at one, one given point. You can see the utility plant. Here's the building proper. That's parking. I got a better shot of that. There you go. Central Utilities, the Technology Center. So they have everything in here. Data center galore um, and people who monitor all of our uh, uh, satellites. Uh, truly amazing. Well, the, the contractor who did it um, uh, was out of uh, the D.C. area. And uh, it's Pearson Associates. I don't know if you're familiar with Pearson Associates. They had uh, really no means for isolating any of the piping as far as seismic went or for thermal expansion. There's nothing shown. So think about it. It's a mission critical facility. And nothing shown. So they go, what do you think? We wrote an RFI. It's two sentences. Please explain to us what you want to do as per the IBC and the ASC. Well, from our end, it was about $700,000 worth of material. For, for Pierce, it ended up being about a $1.8 million extra on this building. Our tax dollars are worth. But it was done properly, and they had everything. You can see, the, I did, this picture is not for me. They gave me a couple of these pictures. I asked them for it, and uh, this, this guy was kind enough to send these. Uh, months down the road. I couldn't take any pictures of the installation. This is the actual courtyard between the two buildings and the data centers and the offices and things like that. There you go. This is a great shot. And you can just see it was just absolutely amazing. So all these custom air handlers, these were treated, and they're all on their own little inertia bases. So these were treated as if they were their own little buildings. So everything had to be isolated. 
All the equipment, all the nozzles, everything. Everything. Now, there, there were flex connectors on everything, loops on everything. It's truly amazing. So I guess, we'll, you know, come on, we don't have any of this happening here. Well, I know you don't. But I'm sure if we can handle that, we can help you with whatever your customer has. We can. We can certainly help you. World Trade Center. Uh, the, the, these buildings are really kind of empty, by the way. I don't know if everybody knows about these right yeah, now. They're, they're still empty. Well. They can't rent any of that out. I don't know it's weird. But anyway, all the main piping that goes in, uh, we're in there on a lot of these. So again, you can see some of the involvement on this one that Con Ed was brawling, which was a 10-inch steam line underneath and a gas line. They said, well, you can't use flexible loops. And the engineer, AKF, said, that's what we're using. And they got into a pretty good, it took about six months for approval on that, but it's in there. So my message is, we can handle all of these types of projects, and we'd love to be able to handle any other projects that you have with your customers. I'm certain we can help you, and I'm certain we've, we've, we've had opportunity to, uh, to deal with an application or an opportunity or something. Any questions? I have one. Yes. <laughs> On the flex connectors. Yes. <coughs> when I order them with, uh, I know you said they're all USA made. Yes. But when I order them with like flanges or the fittings, do you generally try to get USA made fittings, flanges? We can if you like. Our fittings that we typically use are going to be <clears throat> not US made. They're not. No. Okay. No, the fittings are going to be from wherever. So do you have a requirement for something to be 100%? Well, sometimes we do. Sure. So you need to let us know that right up front. Time. And Please. then he'll use all domestic uh, fittings <coughs> for you, for sure. And it's going to be more money. I stumped Dave a little bit this morning. You I stumped a, him? I want to hear this one. Yeah, this I had a good. customer that wanted a uh, quarter inch mail on one end and DIN 10 on the other and oh. did not know what the DIN 10 was. <laughs> Dave didn't? No. Nope. No. So I had to research a little bit with okay. our metric guy and found out that it was close to 3 eighths. So. Okay. But so are, you, are you on your way to success with it I now? I thought it was kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't tell me what the... He was probably not happy that he didn't know. <laughs> was he? No. You just kept coming back with different things. Yeah. Well, offer them this, and then you can get this from your metric supplier. Right. I'm like, no, I want to just do it all one piece. Or if it's a special fitting that you have, that mm -hmm. you may be supplying to someone, and you want to send it to us, we do that a lot. With AD folks especially, we do it a lot. Mm -hmm. We stop domestic flanges. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we could uh, sell some domestic flanges to you. Sure. Yeah. And we will. Um, so we meet by America, by American, all of those things with our standard offerings that are on the shelf. They all hit it for you. But if somebody wants something that is 100% domestic, right. yeah, let us know. Okay. And we'll be happy to do it for you. All right. Happy to do it for you. And we keep some of those pieces and parts around to do that. Okay. 35. 35 people. 35. Oh. Is. 35 people in New York, you have to be lean and mean. That's for sure, because all the facts you know about that. One more question. If we need a piece of paperwork that Sorry. states it is all domestic, like an ST3? Or if they just want something that says you let it's us all, know, do we have to pay any extra for that? No, we'll, we'll, we'll give you some. We'll, we'll, we have uh, so it's of origin is what? Sure. Not yeah, one customer. Like Absolutely. A NAFTA cert? Certs of origin. Well, even just a NAFTA or certs of origin or something. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You just let us know what, what you need, what it needs to state. Okay. And if they have like a spec, that would be really good. Like they may have something that, that is very specific towards that end. But I think she's meaning something that's just basically saying you're made oh, sure. in the USA. So Absolutely. All parts. Yeah. So they, we have like what we have a vendor file that's yep. well, you right on you that we can take. Yeah. That kind of paperwork right there in case we I'm need down my office. You can get with um, Chuck Phillips. He would be the guy that would get you that info. Right? Got that. Yep. Chuck yep. or John, either one. John would be your first line of defense, and then Chuck would be the guy who really yep. sort of kind of crank that out. Thanks, everybody. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. everything. Hopefully it was up. If you have, have my cards in there. Yeah, yep. mine I'm late, by the way. Nice. Nice to meet you. Call me. Uh, you can get me anytime.
365. I'm available to you. Whatever you need for help. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. More.